Hey there, Cats and Giddies. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues. And with this video, I'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 11 of the anime series Onihei. And Heizo's wife, Isai, really comes into the spotlight in this episode. And it's something that's, I, I feel like it's a long time coming. I've really wanted to get to know his wife more because she's usually rendered a background character. She's only very cursorily involved in most of the stories. Most of the stories are focused on Heizo and the arson theft control and going after criminals. And hereupon in this episode, are, are we seeing her being sort of confronted by Ill, an ill-gotten past? You know, the first man that she ever had a relationship with, that she was ever intimate with, sends her a letter and says, you know, for all intents and purposes, you're going to meet me tomorrow at this appointed place and time. Otherwise, I'm coming looking for you. And I'm really wondering what this guy's motivation is. Is it to disgrace her? To sort of try to embarrass her? Or you know, for fear of being embarrassed or disgraced, you know, uh, having uh, her family become one of ill repute, you know, that kind of thing. Is it going to be, he's going to try to hold her ransom uh, for this information, blackmail her in a sense? I'm not really entirely sure. Even Hazel by the end is kind of like, what, what were we up to with this? What was the point of this? Um, but she is shook to her very core. She knows exactly who this is when she gets the letter. She sees the calligraphy of this guy's name and, and all this stuff, this very threatening, ominous tone that is a part of this letter saying, you show up or else. And um, she does, though. For for her part, she, she showed a, a tantamount amount of courage to confront this guy. And she wasn't going in empty-handed or blindly. Uh, you know, she had somebody ready to keep an eye on this guy, to follow his every step, figure out what's going on, because she knew there was more going on to this entire affair. But she shows up, and she's not having this guy's attitude. You know, he, he's playful, he's getting drunk, and he, he's kind of mocking toward her, and, you know, oh, I was your first love. You know, I'm the first one who pop that cherry, if you'll excuse the expression, and everything like that, and she's not having it. I, I think it's very much putting on a brave face for Hisai to, to be confronting this guy, to be listening to this, and really just trying to be there and figure out why this guy came back now. You know, we find out through the flashbacks, through her remembrances, that this guy is really about the ill-gotten gains. He turncoated on his whole family. He killed some people. He stole money. He's been in hiding on the run, probably getting into more trouble. Uh, you know, he probably has a criminal account, if you will, a record that goes back ages. Why now? Why are you showing up on my doorstep now? What could you possibly want? If you have a problem, why did you not go to my husband who could have helped you? Why did you have to come to me? And so it's very apparent to me that this guy, he wants something, you know, whether, whether as I say, to blackmail her or, or she assumes at first maybe he wants to rekindle that love affair of old, which she's not having any part of. Um, I have to give her kudos to really, I, I mean, she wasn't by herself, <laughs> all told. As I said, she had somebody ready and waiting outside to keep an eye on him and, and sort of to observe the situation. But right you know, uh, outside that doorway that he's sitting in the room, you know, she is very much open to being harmed. Um, even if somebody came running, even if somebody was just outside the courtyard that they take her back to and everything, this old lady, by the way, being sent to, to deliver the message, telling her to show up at this appointed place and time, she's very much in danger. And, and it, it was freaking me out. I was on the edge of my seat. But I was also captivated because, as I say, I've wanted to know more about Hazel's wife and her life, what, what she, you know, how she lives, how she deals with his constantly being away and going after criminals and risking his life. I mean, we saw, uh, you know, in the episode, Hazel got sick in, she was kind of nursemaiding him and berating him <laughs> for trying to sneak, uh, uh, you know, late night drinks and everything, which made his sickness even worse. And, um, you know, when the one criminal verbally accosted Ojun in a previous episode and told her, you know, he's not your real father, that she's not your real mother, trying to dismantle Hasegawa's whole family, you know, it, that kind of shook her as well. And she was worried about Ojun, but it was, all ended very happily. They were all happy to be together. They are a loving, true family. And so I really just, I, I've been dying 
to see more of her and to know more about what her life is about, you know, with a husband who is in this employ and such like that. And this was the perfect opportunity seeing this man, Kondo, confronting her and trying to, to sort of put her to task for whatever ill-gotten gains he was seeking, most likely blackmail. And so she leaves, and of course she has her guy tailing him and everything like that. But before she actually parts ways with him, he's like, don't be surprised when you go home. And I'm thinking, oh boy. Of course, because they were showing Ojun at the start of the episode, I'm like, they better not. It better not be something to do with Ojun. They better not kill this child. They better not... I, I, you know, I even went so far as to say they better not kidnap her, kill her, anything like that, hold her hostage for ransom and everything. Um, but I was really fearing because, you know, I, I've seen enough of this show that I think I know where, where the boundaries are that they wouldn't actually kill this child. But then again, I, I couldn't sell the farm. I couldn't bet the farm on it. <laughs> you know, so I was really fearful. And of course, you see that conniving old bag, that old battle axe, Sneaking in after saying, you know, Hisai had been attacked by a, a Ronin and, you know, she, she was brought to a medical facility and taken care of and she's barely hanging on, you know, to, to her life. And she does this to get everyone flustered so she can sneak in and she makes off very much answering to my fears with Ojun. And, um... I just, I started fearing the worst. I was really paranoid and freaking out. And of course, everyone starts losing their ever-loving minds. Sai especially, she's crying. The sun has been out, you know, uh, living up his life of play and all this stuff. Uh, uh, I don't know if there's any truth to the fact that he said he, he was going sparring or going, you know, uh, to the dojo or whatever, uh, practicing his sword skills. He said that in like the last episode and, and we know he was just trying to, you know, go have some fun, go gambling and all this kind of stuff. And uh, he shows up and he's like, well, as I said, I bought candy for Ojun and she's going to be really happy. Maybe she's just playing hide and seek. Nobody knows where the hell she is. She has disappeared. And when he finds this out, I mean, you can kind of see that he feels guilty as it is, but this really gives him this drive to want to help, to want to assist in finding her. Hisai appoints her son, you know, you and me are going to be tasked with figuring this out, you know, everyone else who can help, please do. And we have, you know, Koju, Omasa, Kumahachi, they are all playing roles. Sunny Boy gets in there as well. And they're just trying desperately to track Ojun down, to, to you know, track the old lady down and, and Kondo and all this stuff. And so inadvertently... You know, Heizo's son runs into Hisai, his mother, when they are just about to pounce and, and, you know, try to get basically Kondo. Or at least they were trying to follow him back to wherever he might be going, thinking this would lead them to Ojun. Um, but of course, Kumahachi is already three steps ahead of the game. He knows where they're going and, and you know, he followed him back to the hideout earlier and he's laying in wait. And thankfully, even though this, this made Kondo you know, start like he was freaked out and he took off running. They end up finding Ojun, thankfully. Omasa is appointed with going in and, and getting her and she <laughs> lays out the old lady. And then I just thought it was absolutely ironic. The arson theft control torches the place <laughs> as everybody coming running out, um, including Kondo himself, his, his whole posse and everything. And they're taking, taking them all out left, right and center. And it was really amazing seeing something like this. The organization that is the arson theft control, their loyalty to their master, that is Heizo, the Oni Hei, um, their loyalty to the family, to, to really coming together, even with Heizo gone. He, he's off on business. Whatever he's doing, he's traveling, whatever it is he's up to, he's not here to be part and parcel with this particular movement. And it doesn't matter. The entire arson theft control is a well-oiled machine, even in his absence. And they clamp down, and they get this guy Kondo, they arrest him, they kill as many of these guys as they can, they torch the hideout, and Omasa gets Ojun, and, and, you know, when finally Hisai and Ojun are reunited, I mean, you see Omasa and, and you know, his son being very misty-eyed and teary-eyed, and I was feeling that as well, I'm sure I got misty-eyed, 
just to see how relieved Sai was that nothing happened to Ajun, that she wasn't harmed, she she hadn't been killed. I mean, I was thoroughly relieved as soon as you saw Amasa open that door, and there is Ojun, even though she's tied up, scared, and crying, and that old battle axe is sitting next to her, kind of ruefully looking at her. As soon as I saw Ojun, and I, I heard her whimpering, I'm like, thank God she's alive. <laughs> thank, thank goodness this little girl is alive. And so, of course, once everything is said and done, and, and Hazel has made it his way back home, which, incidentally, I thought it was really poignant that he was trying to find a, a special new bean bag for Ojun because she loves juggling with them and playing with them and everything and he wanted to really get her a, a new one that she would hopefully find beautiful and, and you know, he's seeking the advice of the other guys and uh, they're kind of mocking him at first but he's like don't laugh at me tell me which one do you think she's gonna like uh, genuinely here I love that in the aftermath of all of this he confronts Kondo and he's like you know <laughs> you, you must not think I, I've known all about you all along um, we see just how compassionate and honorable Hazo is. Because when, you know, Hisai's father had thought, here she was disgraced as a young woman. No one would ever marry her knowing that this guy ha had broken those intimate ties with her. He was really afraid that his daughter would be ruined, would have no life. And here's Hazo, the neighbor on the other side uh, from where, you know, <laughs> where this guy Kanshiro Kondo was and he's like you know what I'll marry her I don't really care about her past surely he's seen her surely he's been smitten with her the opportunity to give her a life and be compassionate and, and caring and loving and supporting toward her outweighed everything else and she felt a sense of relief. There, there's actually someone who might love me after all for <laughs> for all of what I've I've had happen to me and everything like that. I, I've been victimized in this such a way, and there's still a chance for me to have happiness. And, and that was all on Hazo, but it's not lost on him one iota. You know, she comes at the end of the episode once he's had his little meeting with Kondo, where Kondo is basically trying to ruin her image to Hazo. And again, he reiterates that point about her future. The woman she is when I met her is the woman she is now. And there's no better woman in the world for me. That loyalty, that love, that companionship floored me in such a positive way. That's how I, you know, I would be grateful to find that in my own life. But it's again, it's not something that's lost on him because he, he favors his wife as being the luckiest thing he has. She's thanking him. She's saying, you know, without you, I'd be nothing. I'd have nothing. And he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's my line. That's how I feel about you. That That's what you are to me. They are on equal footing. They're on equal terms. They are true blooded partners. Neither thinks lesser or greater of the other, but they worship each other and love each other with with wholeheartedness. And, you know, unfortunately, it just seems like this day and age in our real world, that honor, that, that uh, you know, the concept of actually being true to that you are betrothed to and making that vow and that commitment and never backing down. I almost feel like this is, you know, this modern age is an age of quitters divorces and everything like that. I mean, we're implanted with this idea of we need to find our own happiness, even if that means separating yourself from somebody who, who's ruining your life and dragging your life down. And I agree with that to a point, but at the same time, it's kind of like, well, don't enter into those vows in the first place risking all of that, you know, risking that eventual breakdown because more often than not, that's what is the standard in our world this day and age. And so, I mean, for somebody who, like myself, who really has sort of an old school, moralistic view of marriage and professing love for someone and making a commitment and a vow like that, I mean, I if, if I were ever lucky enough to find the kind of relationship Hazo has with Hisai, I would never want 
to risk ruining that ever, you know, um, that would be the, the end all be all to me. And every move and decision and thought I had would be being grateful and being truthful and having mutual respect with whoever chose to share their life with me. And that's exactly what Hazo and Hisai has. That's why Kondo, no matter what Kondo could uh, attempt to say, to ruin her, to disgrace her, was ineffectual to Heizo. As I said, the woman she was when they met is the woman she was now, and she was the most important woman in Heizo's world. <laughs> I loved it. I loved getting to know Hisai more, even though she was brought to the brink of a breakdown and almost losing it all and feeling responsible for that loss, having been tricked, having been potentially blackmailed, all this stuff she confronted it with such courage and stoicism and with the help of the arson theft control. You know, Hazel's well-oiled machine, they succeeded in getting their child back happily ever after. <laughs> you know, this kind of... You couldn't really ask for more in this kind of scenario, for it to end this way, play out this way. And uh, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below. If you've seen episode 11 of Onihei as well, if you enjoyed it as much as I did, whatever insights you have to, uh, you know, further express that I may or may not have talked about about the episode, love it or hate it, anything goes in the comments below. I just love having that conversation. And, um, you know, it, it's just another great episode in this overall fantastic anime series. I can't wait to see where we go from here. Otherwise, that'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well. I'll catch you all later. Peace.